Stewardship is a journey. It's a journey that requires a lot of commitment, sacrifice, and knowledge. It's a journey full of ups and downs, lessons, and is it. But the end of it all is nothing but victory. And just like poet Connelly said, to win without challenges is to triumph without glory. Welcome to Soko Connect. This is where we'll, we'll be engaging with entrepreneurs from various parts of the country. Listen to their stories to help better your business. Join me, I'm your host, Jane Moya. And on our first episode of Soko Connect, we'll be focusing on the art industry. And we are delighted to meet George Kumo. George has been in the art industry for more than three years. And this is his story. Karibu sana, and thank you so much for coming. And to start off, what were you doing before starting this business? We have worked in the last area for about 25 years in the office. I'm uh, doing engineering, that is mechanical engineering. I've worked in various companies in Kenya, uh, subcontracts including Kenya Power, Kenya, Kenya Builders. But I resigned because of the coding. I love art, it's my hobby, it's my passion. Mm -hmm. That's what I do, regardless of the amount of money that I use me. Mm -hmm. Though my projection will be, it will pick up. Maybe it will give me the same, whatever I was getting from the office work, my career. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to quit, to quit your profession, to start, to venture into something different? Um, uh, the way I see it, though everybody has his opinion, mm -hmm. being employed from 8 to 5, you know, you commit yourself for those hours. You have no time for yourself, for your family, to do what you love, your hobbies, you know, your passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it it's kind of, uh, and especially in uh, mechanical engineering, it's kind of uh, like slavery. You know, as, as in as in in you never have time to learn yourself, to learn nature, to learn what you love, you know, do what you love. <coughs> actually, that that was the actually the, my my real inspiration to do what I love. Actually, okay. interesting. So, comparing your business from when you started, it, when was that? About three and a half years ago. Uh -huh. So, what is the progress when you compare your products right now and how they were? when you were starting this business, and also in terms of uh, customers? Uh, initially, when I, I was uh, starting, it was challenging. You know, for me, because I'm based on Moranga, not in normal place, it's kind of the clientele who are there, mm -hmm. um, and all that into art. So it was kind of challenging. But I thought to myself, the only thing to do is kind of poor mm -hmm. So once you start marketing yourself, you know, like people know you're there, whenever they come, they get you there, they need portraits. It's picking up. It's now becoming okay. So speaking of uh, clientele, I believe that is one of the challenges that you've, that you've come across. So what other challenges that you've faced in your entrepreneurial journey? Um, uh, okay, one thing I would say is uh, the economy. The, the major one is the clientele, because, mm -hmm. you know, being in Gara, we are in Eastlands. Then we have the other part of Nairobi, which is the Westlands, the Parklands, Westlands. Mm -hmm. The people there are different from the people who are here. The people in Westlands and Parklands are more exposed to art and the cost of doing art. They appreciate art for what it is. You know, the, your input in the art. The people we have in Gara are kind of Eastlands guys. These are people who are hustlers. They do not have, like me, you know, initially when I started working, they do not have time for art, their hobbies and all that. You know, because of the hassles of life. But the people on the upper side of Nairobi, like Parklands, Westlands, these are people who've made their money. And uh, now they can sit back and enjoy what they have done. Yeah. So they appreciate that. So if I had that kind of exposure, that kind of clientele which is in Parklands and Westlands, maybe I would be talking a different thing. Because the, the cost of one painting here, a small one, would be about 4,000. The same painting will go for about 15,000 in Westlands. Though for me, I, I cannot go to Westlands because the space, there is no space actually. We have the city council, the police, you know, blah, 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 so many things mm -hmm. that make you know to go there. To ask, what marketing strategies do you use? Um, um, I really, at this point in time, I rely on myself. 
-hmm. because I have really nothing more than that apart from my 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 my, my, my art. You know, that is mm -hmm. what speaks for me. Mm -hmm. If you come there by one, you mm -hmm. tell your friend, a friend will tell the friend. No, I rely I basically rely on that. So you don't rely point. on social media? Uh, up to this point, no. I've not tried social media. Though I'm on WhatsApp, uh, most of my friends who are on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And whoever has bought a portrait for me is of course on my phone. So whatever new I new I, I add on to my collection, I normally post it on the WhatsApp status. Mm -hmm. And I believe most of access. Now I believe the cost of living is a bit high, cost of products, nearly all of them have jumped. Has that affected your business in any way? It really has, and especially the time of COVID. Mm -hmm. Then again, uh, because of the elections which were there, uh, guys tend not to use money. And uh, then again, the cost of living has gone up. I think you understand most of the things are skyrocketing. You know, the price of milk, uh, maize, uh, you know, the flying mm -hmm. and And for me, maybe to, uh, to sell one people, it might take even a month, uh, depending on the clientele. So I sometimes have to do without money for a month, month. But these are things that you can absorb as an artist. You know, once you enter, venture into that career and venture into being on the road, these are some factors that you have to absorb and you have to be ready for them. How about some of the things that you use when doing your art? The, the, what do you use? The colors and styles and the canvas? Mm -hmm. I normally use acrylic. Yes. Yeah. Though I would prefer to use oil, this is uh, what you're supposed to use as an artist. But it's very oil, oil paints, but it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So we use acrylic which is washable and which is durable. It will stay for about 300 years, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But the cost of the paints is actually up from about 700 to about 1,000, a tube of 500 ml, mm -hmm. which will go to about 500 years. So if you spread the cost of my paints on what I've done and push it to the buyer, it will be too expensive. I'll make actually just about nothing. Mm -hmm. Some artists will consider using the normal paints. Yeah. You know, the more normal paints you use on the house. Mm -hmm. But that will be wrong because the, that paint normally fades with time. You give it a year, it fades. I try it, it never fade. The cost of canvas has gone up from 250 to about 400 shillings a square meter. Uh, the paint from 700 to about 1,200. That's the center, center. And uh, as, as I, I have told you, it will take about five tubes mm -hmm. to do about five paintings. Now, mm -hmm. you spread that cost and you add the cost of the canvas. One painting will be too expensive for the Eastern guys to buy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I have to look for a way to lower my cost so that it's affordable to any Kenyan. Again, I try to push my prices down so that any Kenyan can afford at no artist class and initially it was uh, it was kind of uh, okay. but today we have Kenyans who appreciate arts they appreciate what you do they would like to put the canvas there they would like portraits of themselves you know rather than go to the everyday thing you make a difference by having art in your house so I try to make it affordable for Kenyans and more so in our place so I believe that she does both abstracts and portraits. Mm -hmm. So do you use the same material to make them of the value? Art is kind of an inspiration. As the word says, inspiral. To spiral is to go round and round. Mm -hmm. It's kind of from the heart. And uh, it's, it's like a calling. You feel you need to paint. You feel you need to do something, to sketch. It's not something you can control. You either have to do it or you keep thinking about it until it's out of you. So most of the concepts are from the heart. What I see in the roads, in the slums, in your area, in your upper Nairobi, you kind of mix it to get a concept. A concept of what nature is all about. It's kind of bring out what people don't see. Because mostly when you're going about your life, you just observe the priorities, you know, what you need to do. I need to eat, I need to do this and this, I need my rent, I need this. 
but when it comes to art, an artist will kept, capture what the normal people don't see. When you are at home, you, know, you can now see what you normally don't see on the road. Like you know, a picture of a boy, chokura, you know, eating, kind, kind of thing, stuff like that. So it's from art. It's not about copying or following what others have done. It's what I see, the way I see nature, the way I see the world at large, from my point of view. So, but an abstract actually means exactly that. You alter the thinking. You see the world in an opposite direction. What, what you cannot see, you kind of alter it. So that an art, it's only an artist who can read it. It's kind of like writing, but it's altered. It's in the abstract. It's not straight. It's kind of crooked. You know, it, it takes you round and round, like in a maze. So that's what we call an abstract. It is my thinking. But a portrait is your picture or a picture of a house, an existing object. Yes. That is the difference. Though the abstract can be either too cheap or too expensive. The portrait has a fixed price mm -hmm. because it's just a copy of the original. Meaning it's, a bit, it's more cheaper. It's than a, yeah, it, okay, no, we cannot say cheaper mm -hmm. because as you do that art, copying an art, you have to be very keen. You know you are producing a replica of an object of an already existing photo. But the abstract, if you can come up with a concept which is no one else has and which really talks and it is spotted by somebody who needs that particular art, actually you can grow even maybe about 1.5 million for one. But a portrait mm -hmm. will it has a fixed amount like 10,000 and below. But an abstract has no fixed price. It can be 500 and it can be 500,000, depending on the purchaser. Yeah. Yeah. Also makes a nod. Do you do the deliveries yourself um, at oh. the capsule? Oh, yeah. I like have told you that they can deliver a pizza in uh, Miami. Mm -hmm. A lady had ordered for one. There is no other way I have to deliver mm -hmm. because if I need the work, I have to do everything for myself. So if you order and deliver as per the need, even if you say you want it in Qatar, I'll send it by parcel. Okay. So I'll do as per what the client wants. Okay. And uh, you said you've been in this industry for more than three years, right? So where do you see your business in the next, let's say, come 10 years? Will you have open the show? My, no, when you are venturing into your own hobby, you know, mm -hmm. what you love most. Your biggest dream as an artist would be to have your own gallery. Mm -hmm. You know, make it in terms of money that I'm no longer hustling, but I have time to do my, my masterpiece. You know, my own time, not governed by the money, not governed by the time, not governed by any other factor, but my own heart. That is how you can produce a masterpiece. You know, people like Socrates, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, all those people had their money for them to produce their masterpieces. Or you have to go to Shiba, in the Grand Missouri, you're okay. And then that is the only way you can have your own masterpiece. Otherwise, most of what I do is governed by very many factors. So to any entrepreneur outside there, what would you like to tell them? Um, uh, anybody can be an artist, but art is a calling, you know, real art is a calling. It's not, it's like the way you see diamond, harmonize, you know, Lionel Richie. Anybody can sing, but it takes a really inspired person to really sing and so The same applies to art. Anybody can sketch or can paint, but it takes a really good artist to be able to produce a masterpiece. It has to be your passion, it has to be from your heart. You're not doing it for the money, not for somebody, but for yourself. Mm -hmm. That is the only, so the way I see it, my, my goal is to have my own gallery in a nice setting, nice community, maybe like Westlands or Karen or places like that where there is exposure. Thank you so much for tuning in. It was a pleasure to meet George Kumo today. And if you want some portraits for your house, you can reach out to him. Would you like to give out your number? Mm -hmm. My number is 0795 
028386 and in Jot Common, I'm at Moranga Road next to Chambai and I'm available anytime 24-7. Let's meet next time. Thank you. <laughs>